Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and the LoopyLamb.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my Ava dishcloth. Now this free dishcloth pattern is a part of my Ava tea towel and dishcloth gift set that is available as a free written pattern over on my blog and I'll link to that in the description box below. To follow along with today's tutorial, you'll need a worsted weight cotton yarn in two different colors of your preference. Today I'm using my favorite cotton yarn called Dishy from We Crochet, and I'm using the colors Butterscotch and Crème Brûlée. Now I have two different samples here, and you can see that it looks great in either a solid color or striped. So if you don't want to use the two colors so you don't have any ends to weave in, you can do this pattern in a solid color. And in my samples here, I use the colors Inlet, uh, for my main color and the color swan for my accent color for my stripes. And um, when I'm making this as a gift set to give to somebody, I do like to use uh, two, one solid and one striped. Um, just kind of looks great as a set with the Ava hanging dish towel. Um, and that is available as a free written pattern over on my blog. You'll also need a five and a half millimeter or I crochet hook a tapestry needle or yarn needle, as well as a pair of scissors to follow along today. So let's clear my workspace here and we'll get started working on our Ava dishcloths. So we're ready to get started on our dishcloth and I'm using the darker of my two colors as my main color here. And that for me, that is the color butterscotch. And we're going to need to create a slip knot in order to place it onto our hook. To do that, we're going to hold on to the tail of our working yarn here, and we're going to wrap it around our fingers. And when we come to the front side of our fingers, we're going to create an X with our yarn. And then we're going to continue to wrap our yarn as we flip our hand over and then use your ring finger to pin the working yarn down. Then you can drop your yarn and pick up your crochet hook and you're going to insert your hook under the first strand of yarn and you're going to go over the first strand uh, the second strand of yarn here and you're going to pull that second strand under the first so I'll do that one more time you're going to insert your hook under the first strand over the second and then pull that out under the first strand and pull all of the yarn off your fingers oops if you drop it just pick up that little loop and you're going to transfer it all onto the hook pull the yarn to tighten it and then you're going to give that yarn a little tug and make sure it is snug to the hook. You want to make sure you've got some movement there in the yarn so you can start to crochet. And now we're ready to create our chain for starting our dishcloth. To do that, we're going to need to start with a chain of 27. To create a chain, you're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop on your hook here to create a chain. So that's one. And we're going to do that again. We're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. And that's our second chain. We're going to continue this yarning over and pulling through the loop on our hook until we have 27 chains, right? So you're going to turn and you can see these little V's. Each one of those is a chain. So I have three and I'm going to continue until I have 27. So now that I have my chain of 27, I'm ready to start with row one of our dishcloth. We're going to need to start working in the third chain from the hook. So I'm going to do that before we start talking about our stitch. And to identify the third chain from the hook, we're going to not count the yarn on our hook. You should never be counting that as a chain. We're always going to start in this first chain here. So we're going to count over three, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to place my finger right next to that chain so I know where I'm going to be inserting my hook. Now I'm going to create what's called a herringbone double crochet. And now this is a really um, quick little variation on the double crochet stitch and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we're going to yarn over our hook and insert it into that third chain. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. At this point you should have three loops on your hook. And we're going to take our hook and we're going to pull that loop that we just created and pull that through the first, uh, the second loop here. So pulling that through and now you have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop. Now you'll still have two loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through both those loops. And that is your herringbone double crochet completed. Now 
these skipped chains that we uh, or these chains that we skipped at the beginning, they will count as your first stitch. If you have a stitch marker handy and um, you feel like you might lose that stitch later on, you can just go ahead and grab that stitch marker and place it into the first or into the top of that chain. You don't need to do this. It's just an optional step, but um, some people find it helpful to not lose that stitch moving forward. So now for the remainder of row one, we're going to do a herringbone double crochet into each of the remaining chains across. And I'll show you how to do this stitch a couple more times. It does take a little while to get used to, but once you get the motion, it's smooth sailing. So we're going to yarn over our hook and insert it into the next chain. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we've got three loops on our hook. So if we're counting this loop here as our first loop, we're this one in the middle will count as the second loop. So we're going to yarn over and pull the first loop through the second loop here. So now we've got two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop only. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's our completed stitch. And I'll show you that again, working into the next chain, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into this next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to pull that loop that we just pulled up through the middle loop on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. And one more time, we'll yarn over, insert into the next loop or next chain here, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Pull that first loop through the second loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. And that's your stitch completed. And you're going to work one herringbone double crochet into each remaining chain across. So if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here at the end of the row, I'll show you what we need to do to move on to row two. So I just finished my last stitch of row one and I'm ready to move on to row two. I'm going to do that by chaining up two. We'll do that by doing a yarn over and pulling that yarn over through the loop on our hook to create a chain one. Then we'll do it again, yarn over, pull through one, and that's our chain two. Now we're going to turn our work and that chain two will count as our first stitch from here and throughout the whole pattern. So when your, your turning chain counts as your first stitch, that means that you're going to skip your first stitch here and work start working into the second stitch of the row. So we're going to do one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. So again, we're not going to work into the last stitch of the previous row. We're going to start working in the second here. So we're going to yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Pull that first loop through the second loop on your hook, then yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and that's your stitch completed. And we're just going to work one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and do one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. And now um, before I let you go though, I've just remembered we have at the end of the row, we have our turning chain. So um, remember where we put, I put that stitch marker that counts as a stitch, those skip stitches. So you have to work one of your herringbone double cro crochets into the top of that stitch. So if you want to work all of your stitches across, I'll show you at the end of this row, how to work into that, um, those skip stitches from the first row. All right, so I'll be back in just one moment to show you how to do that. So I'm at the end of row two, and I'm going to show you how to work into the top of those skipped chains that we have from our previous row. So as I had mentioned, I do have that uh, stitch marker in there, so I'm going to move them out. And I'm going to do my stitch as normal, but I want to just warn you, we're going to be changing colors. So if you're doing your uh, your dishcloth in one color, you can just ignore this instruction about the color change. You can continue to move on doing this stitch in the same color, but I am going to be changing colors here. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that as well. 
So to work into the top of that chain, we're going to yarn over and insert into the top of the chain. It's kind of hard to see. If you turn the chain towards you, you can kind of see the Vs. I personally find that a little easier to turn it. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull up loop. Oh, I missed it all together there. See? It's tricky. So I've got my yarn over and I'm going to insert into the top of the chain there. That's the top of the second skipped chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I've got those three loops on my hook. So I'm going to pull that first loop through the second loop on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one. And now I'm going to actually put this down because I'm going to grab my second color. Because this is the last yarn over of my stitch, I'm going to change into my new color here. So I'm going to lay the new color over my hook. Just for, um, because I'm on the camera, I'm using a slip knot to help it be a little bit more secure while on camera. So I've got my new color. I've yarned over my hook with the new color and I'm pulling that new color through the last two loops of my stitch and I'm ready to move on to my next row. To start our next row, we're going to yarn over and chain up two and turn our work. Now again, that chain two does count as our first stitch. So we're not going to be working into the um, first stitch, we're going to start in the, um, in this actual instance, we're starting in the third, but normally if we were just doing a normal stitch, you'd start in the second, all right? So you just always skip the first stitch if your turning chain counts as the first stitch. So now I've got my chain two. I'm going to do what's called a crossed double crochet. So we're going to use a regular double crochet and we're going to skip our first, our second stitch here and work into the third. So I'm just going to put my finger there to help us find that. And we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into that third stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that's our first double crochet. So now that we have our first double crochet, we're going to do a second double crochet, which is going to cross with this first one. So we're going to yarn over hook and then we're going to work behind the stitch that we just created and insert our hook into that skip stitch. I'll show you that again because it can be easier if you bend your, your stitch down. So we're going to yarn over. I'm going to find that skip stitch behind the stitch we just created and we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now you can see if you take a look at your work, you have a X that's created with the double crochets. And we're going to do this across our work. So we're going to skip the first stitch here and into the next stitch, we're going to double crochet. Okay, now we're going to work a double crochet into that skip stitch, but we're working behind the stitch we just created. So we're going to yarn over, insert into that skip stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and we're going to do that again. Skip the next stitch, double crochet into the second stitch there. And then working behind the stitch we just created, we're going to double crochet into that stitch, that skip stitch. Oops. And we're going to do this all the way across. So again, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next. And then working behind what we just created, we're going to double crochet into that skip stitch. So skip the next stitch, double crochet into the second. Working behind what we just created, we're going to double crochet into that skip stitch. So we're going to continue this all the way across until we have one stitch remaining. If you'd like to pause your video and do this crossed double crochet across your row, I'll meet you back here for the last stitch of the row. So I've done all of my cross stitches across. Again, you can, see, you can see that it's adding a little pop of texture here, and we've got these little X's across our row. 
And so when we're going to work into the last stitch, which is the, that uh, chain two from the previous row, we're just going to work one double crochet into the top of that turning chain. Now we're going to change to back to our original color. So um, I've started my double crochet and left two loops on my hook because when we get to the last yarn over, that's when we're going to change colors. Again, if you don't want to change colors because you don't want to weave in those ends, you can just continue on into the next row with our, with the same color here. So now that I've got my uh, new color here, I'm just laying it over the hook and I'm going to use that new yarn to finish off my double crochet. And now I'm ready to move on to my next row. And we're going to do that by yarning over and chaining up two. Now we're going to turn our work. Now for rows four through eight, we're going to do one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. And we start each row with that chain two turning chain. And throughout this entire pattern, that chain two always counts as the first stitch. So we're never working in that first stitch, we're going to start in the second. So reminder about how to do that herringbone double is we're going to yarn over, insert into that first hook or stitch there, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, uh, not yarn over, goodness. We're gonna pull that first loop through the second loop on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and you're done. And we're just going to do one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows four, five, six, seven, and eight, in this color, meet me back when you're ready to do, you're just about to do the last stitch of row eight because we're going to change color and we're going to uh, do something a little different. So do rows four, five, six, seven, and eight in the herringbone double crochet with one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. So I am about to do my last stitch of row eight and I'm going to change colors to move into row nine. So I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the top of that turning chain from the previous row, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I'm going to yarn over, or sorry, goodness. Then I'm gonna pull that first loop through the second loop on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one. And then I'm going to put this down and grab my second color. I'm gonna lay that second color over the hook and then I'm gonna pull that through the two loops on my hook and I'm ready to move on to my next row. So for row nine, we're gonna chain up, yarn over and chain up two. Then we're going to turn our work. I'm gonna get all these tails out of the way here. And now row nine is a repeat of what we did for row three. And if you remember row three is the crossed double crochet stitching. So because our chain two here counts as our first stitch, we're gonna skip that first stitch, we're gonna skip the second stitch, and then we're gonna double crochet into that third stitch, All right? Because remember, we're crossing our double crochets. So now working behind the stitch that we just did, we're going to double crochet into that skipped stitch. Now we'll double crochet in to not this next stitch, but the second stitch here. And then we're going to work behind the stitch we just created and double crochet into that skip stitch. We're gonna repeat this crossing of the double crochets across our row until we get to the last stitch, which is our turning chain from the previous row. And then we'll double crochet into the top of that chain. And now I'll show you this cross double one more time. We're going to skip the next stitch, working into the second stitch, double crochet. And then working behind the stitch we just created, we're going to double crochet into the skipped stitch. All right, so if you'd like to pause your video and do your crossed double crochets across the row, meet me back here when you're going to do the last stitch of the row because we're going to be changing colors 
uh, using the last stitch. Okay, and again, if you're not changing colors, you can just continue on in the same color that you're working in. So I'm at the end of my row and I'm going to do my double crochet into that top of that turning chain here. So I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then I'm going to leave the last yarn over for my new color. So I'm going to grab my new color here, lay it over the hook, and then pull that new color through the last two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to chain up two and I'm ready to turn and start my new row. I'm going to turn my work. And now I'm ready for row 10. Row 10 and 11 are done the same way. You're going to chain up two, skipping the first stitch. You're going to start and just do a herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. Again, starting in the second stitch because that chain two counts as your first stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows 10 and 11 in doing one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the last stitch of row 11 where we'll be changing our colors again. So I'm on my last stitch here of uh, row 11 and I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to start my stitch by yarning over and inserting into the top of the turning chain, yarning over and pulling up a loop. Pull that loop through the second loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through one. Then we're going to bring in our new color here and we're going to place it on our hook and yarn over and pull that. Well, your new color counts as your yarn over and then we're going to pull that through the remaining two loops on your hook. Then we're going to drop the old color, pick up the new color, if I can. <laughs> then we're going to yarn over and chain up two. And we're going to turn our work. So for this row, it is again a row, a repeat of our crossing double crochet row. So starting in the third stitch, we're going to double crochet. And then working behind the stitch you just did, we're going to double crochet into that skipped stitch. Okay, so then skip the next stitch, working into the second stitch, you're going to double crochet. And then working behind the stitch you just did, you're going to double crochet into that stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do your cross double crochets across the row, meet me back here when you're at your last stitch and I'll show you how we're going to change colors to move into the next row. So I'm on the last stitch of my row and I'm going to be changing colors. So I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the top of that turning chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to grab my new color and I'm going to lay it over my hook and I'm going to yarn or count this as my yarn over and I'm going to pull this through the two loops on my hook and I'm ready to move on to my next row. I'm going to chain up two and turn my work. So for rows 13 through 17, we're just going to do work one half herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. We're going to make sure that we're skipping our first stitch and we're just starting in our second stitch and we're doing that herringbone double crochet across. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 in uh, doing one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. I'll meet you back here at when you're at the last stitch of row 17 and where we're going to change colors before going into row 18. So I'm about to do my last stitch of row 17 and I'm going to be changing colors. So again, I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the uh, top of the turning chain there and pull up a loop. Then I'm going to pull that loop through the second loop on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one. Then I'm going to drop this yarn and bring in my new color. Yarn over hook with the new color. And then I'm going to pull it through the last two loops on my hook. And I'm ready to move on to row 18. For row 18, I'm going to yarn, 
yarn over and chain up two and turn my work. I'm just going to cut that tail before we keep going. And now for row 18, we're going to do another row of those cross double crochets. So again, we're going to start in the third stitch from the hook here. So we're going to double crochet into that third stitch. And then working behind the stitch we just created, we're going to work a double crochet into that skipped stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do a row here of the crossed double crochet stitches, uh, meet me back here when you're ready to do the last stitch of the row, and I will show you how to change colors before we moving on to the end of our project here. So I'm on my last stitch of row 18, and I'm going to start my double crochet by yarning over and inserting into the top of the turning chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull for, through the first two loops. Then I'm going to drop this color and change into the first color, the color A that we've been using. And I'm going to yarn over with that color and pull that through the last two loops on my hook. Now moving forward with the new color, I'm going to chain up two and turn my work. And for the next two rows, rows 19 and 20, we're going to work one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. Just remember that you're going to skip that first stitch because of our chain two, and we're going to start in the second stitch and just do one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across. So if you like to do rows 19 and 20 in doing one herringbone double crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row 20. So I just finished my last stitch of row 20 and I'm ready to finish off. So I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving at least four to six inches of a tail. And then I'm going to, you can either pull the yarn all the way through or I like to yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop on my hook to just help secure it. And so my dishcloth is done and I just weave in my ends here. And that's how you do the Ava dishcloth. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel for free weekly content. If you have any comments or questions, I would love to hear from you. You can leave them in the comments section below. If you would like to make the matching hanging kitchen towel that I have available as a free crochet pattern, you can check that out on my blog, theloopylamp.com. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Happy hooking, and I'll see you next time.